Sorry for being late. Dear Rector, dear Federica, dear students, dear friends, it is an honor to be standing before you here today as the first president of the Republic of Cyprus to be visiting this historic academic institution in the magnificent city of Bruges. It is a privilege to be given the opportunity to address Europe's youth and by definition, Europe's future. I, will, I wish to extend special thanks to the newly formed Cypriot Society of the College for inviting me to speak during the College Cypriot National Week. Since there is only five of them for now, as I'm certain this community will grow, allow me to thank them one by one. John Juan, Hara, Emilia, Philippos, and Stephanie, thank you very much for the for the invitation. Let me also express special thanks to my very good friend and a true European, Rector Mogherini for the vision of, for the college. Having worked very closely with, uh, with Federica during her time as high representative under very challenging conditions for the European Union and also Cyprus, I cannot say that I'm surprised by the college's constant growth under her able leadership including the opening of the new Chirana campus, which I consider a very important development. My, my presence at the college is also timely. 2024 is a year marked by key moments and anniversaries for the European Union and for Cyprus. I stand, dear friends, before you as we're approaching the 20th anniversary of our accession to the European Union. It is a historic milestone for the Republic of Cyprus and other European Union member states. And I, as I often say, in Cyprus, it is the most important achievement of Cyprus since its establishment in 1960. 2024 also marks a sober anniversary uh, for Cyprus and for Europe. It is the 50th anniversary of the illegal 1974 Turkish invasion of Cyprus and the ongoing military occupation of 37% of the military of the territory of the Republic of Cyprus, which is a European Union territory. At the same time, 2024 is a year of celebration of the bedrock of our Union, of our European Union, which is democracy. The June elections for the new European Parliament are around the corner and approximately 366 million Europeans will be called to the polling stations. It is a moment of opportunity and reinvention for the European Union. Dear friends, as a historian by, by training and a former academic, my tendency most of the times is to look to the past and draw lessons for the future. And wearing my political hat, my job is then to transform and translate those lessons that history offers to formulate a path and policies for a better future for the European Union and by consequence for my country, Cyprus. <clears throat> Let me start with the 20th anniversary of uh, our accession to the European Union. The historic fifth enlargement of the European Union of May 2004 proved the force of the enlargement policy in European Union integration. It was an unprecedented and decisive moment for the future of 10 countries lying in the eastern and southern flank of Europe. And it fulfilled the dreams and aspirations of tens of millions of Europeans. The, the Republic of Cyprus proudly joined the biggest and in my opinion, the most successful peace project in human history. A project that has delivered political stability economic prosperity, and social progress to hundreds of millions of people on a continent that in its recent past was ravaged by war. The European Union, despite the serious challenges it has been facing in recent years, continues to inspire countries on the European continent and beyond, largely, largely because it has proven that it heals historical divisions and wounds, and that is transformative and it needs to deliver in this regard. 
It is in this unifying force of the Union that Cypriots aspire as they strive to reunify the last divided European Union member state. In this regard, 2024 serves as an opportunity to reflect on what has been achieved and most importantly on our obligations as member states to build on the work of the great European visionaries who set the foundations and built this remarkable political project. I firmly believe that our obligation, our duty to our predecessors and to generations to come is to strive in unity and solidarity for more Europe, for an ever stronger Europe, for more integration, to ensure that this remarkable pro political project is strengthened and is equipped to respond to challenges internally and externally. By being member states of the Union, we have not only undertaken to safeguard and uphold the core tenets of the Union, democracy, rule of law, fundamental rights and freedoms, which we can never take for granted. We have also undertaken a collective responsibility to progressively strengthen this integration project. In a recent address in Bucharest, I reiterate my conviction that never has the European project been more valuable and that never have we need a stronger, more resilient, more competitive union that is relevant in the daily lives of European citizens and is present as a strong global actor in the geopolitical arena. Undoubtedly, in recent years as a European Union we have, we have had to overcome crisis after crisis, from the economic crisis to migration to Brexit to the pandemic and what we once considered unimaginable, the invasion against a sovereign European country, Ukraine. These crises have at times shaken our unity, and yet, through, through it, all we stuck together in unity. The pandemic wasn't the only unimaginable challenge we have had to face. We also had to address war on European soil. My generation, grow up believing that there was no fragility to the European peace project. And yet, on February 24, 2022, we woke up to a new geopolitical reality with Ukraine, a sovereign European country, invaded, its territorial integrity violated, international legality shattered. Cyprus, a victim of illegal invasion and half a century of continuous occupation, has stood in an unwavering and equivocal manner on the right side of the history on the Russian invasion of Ukraine. We stand and will continue to stand with Ukraine and its courageous people as they fight Russian aggression, which has, in essence, erased the perception that peace on the European continent is given. Rather, it proved that it needs to be fiercely protected and defended, and that can only be achieved if we stand in unity. Standing on the right side of history has not come without cost. We have taken painful decisions that have come at a cost for our people and societies, but this is clearly a cost worth shouldering. We will never allow both the changes stemming from violence and war. At the same time, we have also waken up to the reality that there are no frozen conflicts. The war that is ravaging in the Middle East, in Europe's immediate neighborhood, at Cyprus doorstep, is a tragic proof to that. <clears throat> the European Union simply cannot afford not to have a strong voice and a role of what is happening in the Middle East not only because it forms an integral part of the European Union as a strategic global actor, but also what happens in the Middle East has a serious impact on Europe, from migration to security. The visit last Sunday of the President of the European Commission with alongside five heads of EU member states, including Cyprus, for the historic signing of the European Union Egypt strategic and comprehensive partnership is proof that the European Union can and must play this role. 
For a long time, Cyprus was fully cognizant of the critical role of, P of Egypt as a pillar of stability in the region, and we have been advocate advocating for the development of a strategic partnership between the European Union and Egypt. I'm very glad that last Sunday this vision became a reality. Dear friends, the European Union is a peace project at the service of life when the world needs a force for peace. These are words spoken by Rector Congherini a few years ago, and they are quite appropriate for what is happening now in the Middle East. In Cyprus, we felt a strong moral duty to deliver aid to the suffering Palestinian population in Gaza following the events that unfolded since October 7 with the brutal Hamas attack and Israel's, Israel's retaliation. We are therefore very pleased that following months of intense diplomatic efforts and coordination with like-minded countries, we have put into practical application the Amalthea Cyprus Maritime Corridor with the first few ships carrying humanitarian aid having made it safely to Gaza. One ship has already successfully delivered aid to Gaza and another is on its way to Gaza as we are working hard with our partners. More than 40 states have expressed interest to ensure continuous flow of aid to civilians. It was an effort that we pursued fully aware of its enormous difficulties fully aware that almost no one believed that it could actually be done. But as a small country, as a small EU member state without any hidden agendas, having an, an important geopolitical location and excellent relations with all neighboring countries, we had the responsibility to pursue it. During these months, since the tragic events in October, Cyprus worked persistently and, and diligently. We met and discuss this proposal with all in interested parties, and we persevere. And I'm very glad to say that with the support of the European Union, of course, the United States, and the United Arab Emirates, we succeeded to make this a reality, an achievement for all of the European Union mm -hmm. and for the benefit of hundreds of thousands of people. This is a manifestation of the role that the European Union can play and the role that Cyprus can play as a bridge between the turbulent Middle East region and the rest of Europe. The European Union needs to be actively present in its neighborhood and support all efforts for a sustainable ceasefire that would hopefully lead to renewed negotiations on the basis of UN Security Council resolutions for a two-state solution for Palestine and Israel. Against this geopolitical backdrop, in an ever-shifting and complex geopolitical context that demands resilience, adaptability, strength, and unwavering commitment to core values, and an ability to project and enforcement, it is imperative to take a step back and think what comes next for our union. What is our vision for the European Union's future? What is the union we want? The discussions we are having in Brussels, also at the upcoming European Council, on the strategic agenda about how we create a more geopolitical and strategically autonomous union that is a global actor, is not theoretical, and it must time and time again be proven in a concrete way. In order to materialize, materialize the European Union's geopolitical role, first and foremost, we must be able to rely on ourselves without always depending on external and some extent volatile factors. Therefore, the European Union's strategic autonomy must not remain an abstract idea, but rather must be given flesh and bones and become a reality. In that regard, building European defense at the Union level can be catalytic and it is something that we support fervently. At the same time, the European Union needs to deliver to its citizens, become more competitive, generate job growth, become climate resilient, and transform into clean, resource efficient, and competitive economy. 
Cyprus will continue contributing constructively to the deliberations of the future of Europe, the strategic agenda ahead of its expected adoption in the June European Council. Dear friends, I began my remarks by referring to the three key moments and anniversaries that coincide in 2024. 20 years since accession, 50 years anniversary since the Turkish invasion, and the upcoming European elections. The thread running through them is a desire and vision for the future, for the Europe we want, for more integration, for more unity, which inevitably means that the European Union must also become a catalyst to reunify its last divided member states through a comprehensive settlement in line with UN Security Council resolutions and their give. A solution that safeguards the fundamental rights and freedoms of all Cypriots, Greek Cypriots, Turkish Cypriots, Maronites, Latins, and Armenians. In these efforts for reunification, the leading role of the European Union is essential, as it is substantial and active involvement can help in restarting the negotiations in achieving a solution to the Cyprus issue. As I have repeatedly mentioned, the tools that the European Union has at its disposal can help to reach a mutually beneficial state of affairs for all the Cypriot people, for the European Union, Turkey, and the wider region. Since assuming office, I have been in constant communication with Greek Cypriot and Turkish Cypriot civil society groups and representatives of youth networks. I'm well aware of the fact that the new generation of the island both Greek Cypriots and Turkish Cypriots are eager for peace. And I think that the Cypriot Society of the College of Europe is indeed a prime example of this since it is composed of members from both Greek and Turkish Cypriot communities. Your call for peace is clearly heard and I would spare no effort to make the common dream of reunification, peace and prosperity in our country a reality. Dear friends, joining the European Union 20 years ago was a transformative event for the Republic of Cyprus and for other nine member states in 2004. The then new member states have also greatly contributed to the involvement and improvement of our ever closer union, of our joint European family. This was mostly done by younger people, students and new professionals that aspire to embrace their European identity. I can also attest, as a younger person then, the extremely positive feelings of Cypriots, but mainly of Cypriot youth, when Cyprus joined the European Union. It was a unique moment, filled with positivity, expectation, dreams for a better future for all, and youth was a motivating power in fully grasping this momentum. 20 years on, it is now your turn, Europe's youth, Europe's future, to dream, to hope, but also to strive to help advance our European family ever closer. Thank you very much.